got a surprise for y'all this morning. Welcome back into the uh, Breakfast Club morning show. Uh, North Carolina Congressman Robert Pittenger joins us by way of phone with uh, North Carolina's 9th Congressional District, taking a few minutes out of his uh, schedule to speak with us this morning. How you doing, Congressman? Good morning. I hope y'all are well. Well, we are glad you took time to uh, talk with us. Wouldn't miss it. So, um, Congressman, I wanted to ask you um, and get you to explain about this uh, Chong Queen. I'm probably not saying it right, but this uh, this company, Chong Queen Kaysen Enterprise Group, um, they want to take over the uh, Chicago Stock Exchange. I- explain this story uh, for our listeners, will you? Sure. Well, it's very concerning uh, to us. I uh, wrote a letter and had 45 of my uh, House colleagues co-signed the letter with me uh, to the uh, Committee on Foreign Investments to look into this <clears throat> because as this company we don't know much about, uh, all the Chinese companies, uh, they do not come forward with uh, any information. And what we do know is that there's been an affiliation with with their government. And the CEO has even served on official government boards. So the concern is that the Chinese government would have some direct impact uh, regarding that exchange. Now, the the exchanges, the the total trade exchange is about $22 trillion uh, in this country. And anyone who has had a history of manipulating currencies and manipulating uh, a trade, uh, you you become somewhat guarded, and to say the least. So our concern is that we have this reviewed carefully. It is a very uh, critical issue regarding our economy and, frankly, our national security. Uh, huh. They could at any point uh, even shut the, the exchange down if they so chose to. It, it it really doesn't make any any sense. Where did this uh, where did this start? Uh, and is there anyone on Capitol Hill that thinks this is a good idea? Well, there's a lot of Chinese investments taking place in the United States today, and that's not illegal. Yeah. Uh, the concern uh, of the Committee on Foreign Investments is to review any situation that could affect our national security, and we of course believe that this one very much could. But we want to see greater transparency. Uh, you know, here's a, here's a country who has been uh, probably more than any other country in the world uh, guilty of cyber attacks yes. uh, in our country. And so with this type of uh, capability and interest and commitment, uh, we need to be very suspect in terms of what their objectives are here. Those, I guess, would argue that this exchange, the uh, Chicago uh, Stock Exchange, which is 134 years old, they say it handles very little U.S. stock trading, uh, 0.5%. But the deal, if it is approved, would give this company a foothold into, of course, the world's largest uh, equity market. It just seems troubling uh, that this proposed acquisition, it'd be the very first time that a Chinese-owned, possibly state-influenced firm maintain direct access, uh, uh, access into uh, our economy. I just uh, well, Particularly if they with a pattern of manipulation of their currencies. Uh, you know, we believe in, in free trade, but we believe in fair trade and free trade, and we've never seen fair trade from the Chinese. And right now, the concern, while it is a modest amount of actual transactions, they could use that as a foothold to manipulate the process because when you're negotiating on acquiring a stock, you're looking for the lowest price. And they could, uh, uh, any in any possible way, manipulate that process. They could even shut down their exchange if they wanted to. Well, I, I don't know. It just reeks of, uh, I, I don't know. Uh, I'm not really a stocks guy, but it just seems troubling. Plus, the Chinese have been really buying up a lot of real estate and uh, you know, and making huge investments uh, in this country. Well, there's as well a lot of sensitive data on corporations that they would have access to, and all of these have become send out major alarms to me, and that's why I wrote the letter. Yep. In two days, I got 45 of my colleagues to sign it. It usually takes two weeks, 
And if we we were on a work week right now, leaving Washington, so I wanted to get it out, and I didn't. Uh, I felt it was time sensitive, or else I'd have uh, stayed. We would have got more names, but uh, that. Having 45 members of Congress say, hey, you better look at this is a major statement. Congressman, um, how close is this thing? How close was it uh, prior to your letter? How close was this uh, before being voted in? Well, uh, they've made the submission to this financial uh, investment uh, committee, and which has to approve it. And we wanted to get uh, our on re- We want to go on record with that committee prior to their review, and we're con- we were concerned that this week that they would begin reviewing that process. Okay, so uh, is, is there a, a magic date that this is going to be voted on or, or vetted? The committee will review it, and it's they have whatever period of time they need to come to their own evaluation. Mm-hmm. But we want to make sure that this gets critical attention. Okay, well, very good, and we, we appreciate you uh, what you're doing on, on that. It just, uh, that just seems uh, scary. Uh, you're a man of your word, I understand. You had to settle a Super Bowl bet. <laughs> no, I did do that. <laughs> I won the previous two bets. One I'm still waiting to collect on, but I did catch up with Mike Kaufman, who's a member of Congress from Denver, and delivered some Bojangles chicken and some cheer wine. <laughs> that, that got the attention of the national media. They seem to like that. Well, hey. he I'd have brought him some liver mush, too. I stopped there. Yeah, he, uh, he might have got something. While we got you on the on the phone, well, while we got got a moment, Congressman, let's ask you your thoughts about this uh, redrawing of the congressional uh, uh, redrawing of the district. It, it seemed like when we first heard this that uh, it, it was going to be really hard to get this done in this election cycle because a lot of people have already cast votes, and this has just turned into a it's just turned into a mess. It really is, frankly. It's- Tragic that this three-judge panel waited this long to make a decision. That's what I thought. Uh, you know, we've already got people casting ballots now uh, who are out of state and out of country, and uh, it's not fair to them, displaces them. And so now we're going to have to start all over again. It's going to cost the state about 9 or $10 million to run this campaign just exclusively uh, for the primary elections for the members of Congress. The, the other primaries, the presidential on down, they'll continue on March 15th, but they're going to have to delay ours Yeah, subject to the approval of these maps. The maps should be approved this week, I'm told, in the General Assembly. You know, the thing about it, uh, and Congress, uh, Congressman Robert Pittenger is our, our guest, um, you know, we keep hearing mainly about uh, uh, the 1st and the 12th districts, but the proposed map also changes each of the state's 13 congressional districts, some of them pretty much, two House members would no longer live in the districts they now represent. Yeah, it's it's pretty radical change. And some of, some of them don't get touched much at all. Meadows and McHenry really doesn't get touched much. Virginia and Fox a little bit. But the mine is a radical change. Uh, you know, I used to govern most of uh, western North Carolina plus uh, most of Mecklenburg and Iredale. And now I'll go from... Uh, uh, the southern part of Mecklenburg on, on past you know, Fayetteville. Yeah. Mm. Uh, well, that's that's definitely something to, to keep an eye on uh, also. Yes, sir. L- listen, before we uh, let you go, I wanted to, to ask you, uh, this goes back to uh, to last month, but you met with Pastor Saeed uh, Abedini. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, you flew over to uh, Germany. Uh, tell our listeners the, that story. You helped uh, secure his release. I did work on Pastor Aberdeen's release for about two and a half years, and uh, it, when he was going to be released, uh, the White House and the State Department asked me if I would like to go and welcome him back to the United States in at Rheinstein, uh, Germany, where the three hostages were returned to. <clears throat> so I met him there, and he is now returned to Idaho. But what a, a awful experience he went through at the Mercy of the uh, Iranians who tortured him mentally and physically and uh, just because of his Christian faith, because he walked with Jesus and told people about Jesus, he was uh, uh, put in jail and, and harshly treated. For f- folks not familiar, Pastor Abedini converted from Islam to Christianity and he went to Iran back in 2012 on a mission to build an orphanage there. Uh, and then he was detained in July of 2012 he was charged with evangelizing, 
and sentenced to eight years in prison. And the judge said his activities were, quote, threatening the national security of Iran, unquote. Exactly Just terrible. Right. The sad case, but he's back now. And the trouble is, though, that this is pervasive throughout the world. <clears throat> There's never been uh, such horrific persecution of Christians since, frankly, the early church. Hmm. And uh, you, the beheadings, the brutal treatment, the dissecting of body parts, it's just uh, egregious what these terrorists have done yep. uh, throughout Syria and Iraq and uh, uh, other parts in Egypt and other parts of the, of the world. It really is. Congressman, we, we appreciate your uh, time this morning to talk about several of these uh, of these topics, and we appreciate you being a watchdog for us with... Uh, now, I don't know. Uh, the Chinese kind of scare me a little bit, and uh, the fact that they're they're buying up so much in this country, and now want to buy these sh- Chicago Stock Exchange, just uh, just doesn't seem like a good idea. No, it doesn't at all. And I hope the people who are on that committee, we're we're going to stay on top of this to make sure that there's some clear thinking here that they recognize the national security implications and the economic implications on our country. Well, this right. Congressman, we appreciate your time. Hope you have a good day. You too. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. God bless you. Mm-hmm. You too. Appreciate Congressman uh, Robert uh, Pittenger's time this morning <laughs> talking to us about that. That is disturbing. I, it, 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 what amazes me is the amount of things that go on in this country that people just never, I mean, like, they don't even ever hear about. Yeah. Uh, that would have been something that totally would have flew under the radar. It yeah, would just been like, right. when did the Chinese buy the, the stock market? And mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. well, that happened a couple of years ago. Who knew Nobody. Yeah, no, it's just a scary thought. Yeah, it is. We'll uh, take a quick break here. Be back with more of The Breakfast Club. Y'all stick around. Uh, we'll be back with more right after this.